Kill Squad markets itself as an ARPG, when in fact it is a twin-stick shooter co-op with lots of roguelite features. Now I want to explain a bunch of things to you before we actually get in and show you like full on, like a full run match because the actual matches themselves are actually very fun, but a lot of people are probably not going to agree with the way they do, they do things on the back end in terms of character progression and whatnot. And this also rolls into the reason why it is a twin stick shooter and not an ARPG. When you hear ARPG, you think PoE and Diablo. Visually, sure, the game looks like it's it's kind of a reskin Diablo. It looks, it looks like an ARPG in that same realm. But it is in fact not because there is no progressing story. There is no actual character development. You don't have any customer character, a custom uh, ca a character customization or anything like that. Everything is on the back end is pretty just pretty superficial. If you look at, for example, go to my heroes here. This is my main character that I roll with all the time. Uh, if I go to his inventory, you can see that I have what's called a vector score. Now the vector score is basically a gear score, and it says okay, your average for all three slots that you have is 55 that determines what what contracts you're able to pick up as this character and do and perform optimally really uh if i look over here at my vector range you can see vector 35 through 90 in the veterans uh as a level 50 something i could do everything all the way up to my gear my, my vector score and everything exceeding it i'm gonna actually do a diminished amount of damage uh, and take, I'll still take about the same amount of damage you would expect at that level, not necessarily more. Not that my, te my testing is actually shown, I could be wrong on that front. But on the, uh, but if I take a character that is, and I'll actually just show you video here, if I take a character that is vector level 5, which is basically fresh, and I say, okay, you're gonna go into this particular contract and do this match, and you're gonna, uh, and you will see that at level 5, vector 5 contract, vector 5 character, you do the optimal num amount of damage, and you take an optimal amount of damage to the, your, your character itself. If I go in there with somebody who is over leveled, I happen to have a bunch of gear for this character, I slap it all on and I go into the match, I will still do the same amount of damage in this Vector 5, something that is one, one tenth the amount of uh, gear score that I need in order to perform, uh, to, to, to take this uh, contract. You would think I would do more damage, but in fact you don't. Actually, I just take a mitigated amount of damage on my character, but that's it. Now, the only time it actually starts to really kick in is when you try to do things that are above your vector score. If I take that same level five and I go into a, a vector 25 uh, contract using, again, the, the vector five, the starter gear, you'll see that I'm actually taking, uh, I'm taking chunks, chunks of health for damage, and I am doing a diminished amount of damage compared to, if I flip over to actually strapping her up with a whole bunch of gear, which has still put me over the gear, the vector score uh, for that particular level, you'll see I'm doing the optimal amount of damage and taking less damage. So it's not until you start to actually go and exceed your vector level in contracts, you actually start to see a difference, which means that the gear itself doesn't really actually do anything other than allow you to perform at a higher uh, rating, a vector rating, and that's pretty much it. So I'm not, when I get a new crazy weapon on my, uh, on, on one of my heroes, I'm not actually getting a, something that does more damage. It has a perk on it, sure, and we're gonna talk about that in a second, but it doesn't necessarily hit harder. <laughs> so, so this is the part where it doesn't make it an AR, it makes it, basically disqualifies it for being an ARPG, and puts it more into the arcadey category, uh, again, with roguelite elements, uh, because it has character progression, and everything inside the match actually uh, ends when you finish the match. So any kind of progression that you get during the match itself, outside of currency, or resources, or materials, or whatever you pick up uh, during the match itself, uh, everything else will uh, will basically disappear. All your XP and everything. And I'll show you all that when we actually play the game. Now, looking at the weapon itself, if I go and I right-click on it here and take a look at it, you can see that I've actually upgraded this one just one. I have the option to upgrade it again once I pick up some more vibranium scraps. You can see I have plenty of the other material available to me. So there's, there's a weird imbalance here where I have 586 and I only need 10, uh, 65, 10, and then I have one one fifth of the uh, the needed vibranium in order to uh, vibranium in order to actually upgrade this one again. Uh, but I did just start really working in the veteran space, and I have been seeing that I have been getting more of these rarer tertiary resources. Uh, uh, it, 
in, in my inventory as I go through and I complete some of these missions. Now, uh, you don't necessarily have to upgrade your weapon because as you're doing missions, you're constantly buying new gear anyways. And I really, really hope that as I continue and as I get up to like, like maybe Vector 75 or uh, Vector 100 or something eventually, uh, maybe it, I could actually hold on to weapon for any certain amount of time and really get the chance to enjoy it and use it for all the procs and everything that uh, that it offers. Now I will say this, I've actually not witnessed, and this could change during the gameplay that we're about to do, uh, I, I have not actually witnessed any of the perks actually perform. I had I have a, if I go back to my here, my here inventory here, um, I actually do have a Mjolnir, you probably looks familiar to you, right? I'm gonna strap this guy on, gigantic hammer, okay, <laughs> that I'm clearly worthy of wielding. Uh, this one has a 50% chance to spawn a spark that jumps three times, dealing 200 each time. I have not actually witnessed this. Now, the gameplay itself is very hectic, it's very possible I could have missed it, but I have not actually witnessed this myself. And so, when we play, keep your eyes out to see if any of the characters just spontaneously combust, because that means that these perks are working. Now, the skills, we'll look at this now because this once we actually end the game, we just kind of go through and select them, okay? The skill tree, the way it works, and this is this is the in-game progression that ends up that wipes every time you finish a contract. You start off with your handful of skills, right? And so I have a dash, every character has some kind of movement ability. Uh, I have my overshield, which is a passive skill. And all that is, is as I do more damage, I actually build up an extra bonus shield. And there are certain perks, if I look over here uh, to like this perk right here, it says overshield generated increases 100 per hit. So I get more overshield when I hit things. And then if I look over here, it says if you have 80% or more shield, you will receive 100% damage bonus. So there's talk about the overshield. There are some uh, uh, some misspellings and some translation issues with some of the tooltips here and there. So some words may not be uh, used the way they're supposed to be. And in this case, this should actually say overshield. So yes, if I have 80% or more shield, then I receive 100% damage bonus. So you can see how all these things can kind of synergize as you get through into the uh, uh, to the to the final to level 10. And every time you play a match, you will always get level 10 by the time you get to the end. So it really isn't so much like you're grinding out levels inside a match itself. You just kind of get handed them as you progress through uh, the uh, through that match itself. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. It's not there's they, they, they might as well just put like gates up and say, OK, you pass this gate, you get in the next level and you get the next whatever, because that's what it feels like uh, up here. Again, we have a berserk taunt and we have stop. These are basically just movement attacks. And you can see they're kind of they're related. They're color coded so you can very quickly go through. Well, not really color coded in, in every sense, but like this one right here is a stop to hit attack that does whatever. And then over here, this one has adds a delayed second hit for 200 damage. And what happens is you basically dunk and then a couple seconds later, another like lightning strike will, will come down uh, from the sky. Level six is when you get your ults. And this is actually where like my my particular character uh, is very different where I could go the damage dealing route where I basically, where I basically get, uh, I call it, it's a dunk basically, right? You shoot off into space and you come like slamming down to the ground doing damage. Uh, or you could get the protection matrix here that will, uh, as it says, uh, make you and your nearby allies invulnerable for eight seconds. And then you get augments when you get to the last here and you can actually go ahead and augment that further. I could say 200% bonus damage after using for 10 seconds or I could choose I extra bad basically reduce the cooldown on my shield and whatever, whatever. So you can build some fairly diverse builds uh, as you go through and you play each match. You could tailor them to your party. You could tailor them to what you're encountering. There's a bunch of different things you could do uh, to make it happen. Now, that being said, you really end up with like two viable builds with like a couple of variations in there. So it's not like there's an infinite number of builds or anything like that. It's still pretty basic. Uh, and, and again, this kind of falls back to it being a little arcadey in that in that regard. Uh, going back over here to the shop, this is super important. So my shop has been upgraded. When you first start playing the game, you're not going to see blue. You're going to see basically black and white or gray or whatever the buttons were before. Uh, all that means is that I have access to a higher tier of rare weapons. Like I said, it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> All it does, it just gives you a different set of perks. Sometimes the perks are a little bit better as, as, the, uh, as the vector level goes up, but you don't actually do more damage. My DPS is not gonna go up. As a matter of fact, my DPS is fixed right here at 40. And if I go over here to change my hero to, uh, to her, who I actually have a bunch of gear for her, she's at DPS is at 60. I go to inventory and if I strip her of all of her good gear here and put all of her basic gear on, 
I actually showed that she had a mix of gear here. So I'm actually going to put this on here. And we'll go and sh go back and I'll show you. So she's at 60. If I go back again, it's strip all the way down to her basic gear. She is still at 60. Her health, I think, has not changed. She has plus 1,000, which means she has a piece of gear or something on her that gives her plus 1,000. Might be a passive ability. I'm not quite sure. But I go through this and I put all these on. Yeah, I mean, like, well, the, the, the 1,000 health is disappeared, so it was linked to one piece of gear that she had. Uh, but you can see the DPS does not change. <laughs> so... <laughs> so yeah, man, it's a twin stick, all right? The Warrior Nun, Cass. This is one I actually want to start exploring some other time, because uh, I really like the way that she plays. We're going to go ahead and select a contract that's comparable to my level, because matchmaking takes forever, as we have to find one that already has people in. <laughs> and here we go. We got three people now. Let me see one more and we're good to go. Uh, yes, matchmaking does sometimes take seemingly forever. Uh, it could be because it's an indie game and it's online multiplayer. And so you don't necessarily have a whole lot of players that are always available, uh, especially when you start to get to the higher levels. There's tons that are playing in the lower levels. And of course, as the game picks up and it gets more people in that first week, right? In the first like week or two, it's going to have an abundance of players Beyond that, it's going to start to actually kind of spread out a little bit. You're going to have a lot of freshies. You're going to have a lot of people who are not going to be able to get over that hump in the middle. And then you're going to have a bunch of people that are going to grind this thing all the way to the end. And so what I did right there is I went to the contract screen. I found someone, I found a contract that I already had that was comparable to my level, level 60. I'm, I'm level vector level 57. Uh, and I joined one that had, of course, a party attached to it there. Otherwise, who knows how long it'd be sitting in... Uh, uh, in uh, in matchmaking. I can tell you right now that actually I've cut out six minutes of footage of me going in and out of various contracts looking for uh, matchmaking to actually trigger and it was not working. So your mileage may vary <laughs> if you try to go and host your own map. Of course, I've been playing mostly uh, with uh, you know, with friends. And so playing with friends, it's, it's like, well, one, that makes any game pretty much fun. And two, as much damage I do here. Not so uh, pretty close. I think 120 is supposed to be my actual swing, first swing. So, again, this is reflective of just where I'm at in terms of uh, vector score and then uh, and how I'll basically perform during this uh, during this contract. This is actually perfect. Yeah, we'll be able to get through this pretty easily. I'll be able to explain a couple things to you folks. Upper left corner, those are my party frames. There, those are all of my people that I'm running with. You can see their classes. You can see their names. You can see what their <laughs> What there? Oh, okay. That's the. Uh, I was gonna say. I was like, holy crap! Zero milliseconds. This guy's in my house. <laughs> I'm playing games with you from inside the house. Um, this is. Uh, no, that's because he's the host, of course. So he has host advantage. Zero milliseconds. Uh, and of course, you can see at the bottom, I have my skills available to me. Right underneath that, you can see it says level one with the progressing skill bar or uh, XP bar. That is uh, your in-game XP. Now, as you gain experience killing things, you will level up. Every even number, you get a new skill or ability. Uh, or a skill ability upgrade rather, and uh, and every odd one you get just a pure stat upgrade. So I'll go pop this open here. These guys can deal with these things by themselves. I'm gonna go ahead and select. Let's see, stomp, uh, increase radius, uh, two times whirlwind. We'll be two times whirlwind. That way I can swing forever. Do, 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 do. Just try not to get hit by stuff like that. Like that and that. <laughs> Let's grab some of this DNA. DNA is your in-game currency, in-match currency, I should say. Oh, somebody's dead already. But before we address that, we need to talk about the DNA vendors here that have a temporary buff, temporary meaning it only lasts for this particular match, and that's pretty much it, or a consumable item that you could use, again, only during this match. Sometimes you could drop a mine, or you could have bullets fly off in all directions on a 60 second cooldown, uh, or you can have plus 1,000 health or shield or something like that. Personally, I'd rather save my DNA for the end of the match, because then I can convert it over to credits, and then take advantage of the credits to buy more weapons, it gets stronger, higher vector level contracts, etc. Now back to this nonsense. Damn, that, that didn't take long. I got him. When you are dead or incapacitated, you will uh, be down for a one minute period. If nobody reses you within that period, you will just be res in place. There's no, whoa, let's get out of the way here. You will not get uh, sent back to the lobby or anything like that. You just get resed. So it, it may seem like, oh, there's not a whole lot of penalty for dying. Yes, there is. When your entire team wipes. <laughs> <laughs> that's when the penalty really starts to kick in, and that has happened a number of times uh, by trying to do uh, contracts that are that are way over leveled with characters that are uh, that are obviously uh, with a team that is also uh, under leveled as a whole, not just me being uh, carried, which doesn't happen like ever. Come on now, let's see, take this guy. Oh, got another big boy coming here. 
Get out of the way, there we go. Whoa, they usually telegraph where they're going, but uh, otherwise it's like they have to watch. Like, you can see where this guy is swinging, you can see one, two, three, you just gotta basically stay out of his look, stay out of his way, he's swinging. <laughs> just don't get in his fist's way. Now these guys, obviously they have to telegraph because you wouldn't know that they're about to charge. And so they just go. Reminds me of, what is that, Wild Star, man. Man, man, man. Old, ye olden days of MMOs that no one plays anymore except for Final Fantasy XIV, apparently. <laughs> but watch out. So this one you see, it says uh, level 3 stat increase. That's pretty much it. So I'll get bigger and stronger. Although, you know, you, it's not like it's hugely uh, uh, incremental. It's just just, just, in, just regular incremental. I'm busting these dudes here. Now, you saw that I have already gone through and I picked up a couple things. Uh, there's not actually as many resources yet. I think as we get further into the level, we're going to start to see more. This DNA here again, this is the currency. It's over right corner. It says I have 1486 credits. That is the account level currency. And right next to this DNA, that is in-match currency that you will that will convert to credits when you leave uh, at a rate of 2 to 1. So if I have 90 credits or 100 DNA, then that will turn into 50 credits. That's how math works. Uh, <laughs> so... Oh, that, 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 I can't actually see this guy swinging. He's swinging right now. Don't want to get caught up in that. The very brightly colored game, which makes it amazing to play on the couch, by the way, which is why I play with the controller, because I like that. I feel like this is totally a couch game, you know? Think like Gauntlet, Full Metal Fury, stuff like that. Like, these are games that just, they're designed to play on the couch. Hold on, I'm gonna grab this real quick. Okay, somebody else grabbed it. Level 4, let's go and get out of the way here. Upgrade, let's see. Payback every time you hit 10% chance to counter with thunder damage. Let's see, let's go get this and get out of the way. Here he comes. All right. So this basically allows me to do attacks while I run. So I dash, right? So dash, you see how he does that. Does a little bit of damage. Is a person on fire, I think, a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. And if I were to single tap, I'll do a swing while I'm running. If I were to double tap, I'll do a dunk. Just like that, with a little bit of a knockback. So you can change it together, chain it together with your other abilities and basically have all kinds of knockbacks and all kinds of craziness, which is good and bad because sometimes you knock characters out of the reach of others, uh, others' ab abilities. So it's not always <laughs> in your best interest to like throw knockbacks all over the place. But you know what? When you're mashing skills and you're just kind of chaining things together, yeah, it's kind of hard to really control that stuff. You're just going to be throwing mobs all over the place. So somebody's actually uh, way behind or way ahead. It looks like very way behind. I can help these guys here. So this is uh, one of my dunks here, and then I could dash and do another one. So it just, just dunks all over the place. Love me some some dunking warriors. <laughs> all right, oh right there. There's uh, there's a shiny on the ground there. All that is basically a, uh, a a resource, a crafting resource that you could use to upgrade your weapons and whatnot. Let's see, this will pop up, and it's oh, this is actually credits. Okay. So sometimes you get credits, sometimes you get uh, God. They're still fighting stuff over there. What is taking so long? This is gonna be the longest episode. <clears throat> let's go guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. Just one dude! How long does it take? See that little hitch right there? Uh-huh, that's not that, that wasn't the video, that wasn't your YouTubes, nope. That was, oh god, another one. Somebody must have found, uh, found an ability or found an enemy that uh, is, uh, that has a, an, uh, an impassable barrier. That's usually what triggers those things. We'll see. I see something over there. Could be wrong. Lots of lots of heals. Oh no, nope, nope, nothing. There's just 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 a couple of hitches. Okay, I don't wanna Okay, that guy's done, so good. Let's go over here and take out the big guy. This guy's causing all the problems here. Whoa! This is dunk on um Oh Alpha Dolem. I believe this is oh no, this is not. He is actually the uh the target for other contracts, but not this one. Don't get out of the way. He's gonna wreck us. We are not doing enough damage to this guy. These ads are not helping at all. Those environmentals that are coming down here. Oh, those beams of light. That's not the enemy. That is uh, this regular old environmentals, man. Sometimes you get, sometimes you get, you get a place that has meteor storms. Sometimes they have. Uh, at least if I could get a dunk off before he swings on me. And sometimes you just get yourself. Uh, just giant beams of light. So slide in here, do a little dunk. Oh god! Oh man! I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck in him. There we go. Let's get some distance here. I have to get that armor down. I have to get it down. 
to get to the swing here. Oh, I jumped right into that. Game over! Oh, that's it! <laughs> oh, man, that's the end. Oh, well, at least you can see what it's like when you lose. You get to hear this really loud sound. Every time it, the match ends, it, the, the sound, it's almost as if it plays every single, every single one of those title cards for every one of those characters plays its own individual sound and it just plays them all simultaneously and just adds each one on top of each other, which makes it so loud. But anyways, good thing I have backup footage of us actually completing a level. So you can see what it's like to fight a boss. Now, there are a number of different bosses. We have not seen them all. We've not seen all of the mechanics for all the bosses. Some of them have phases. Uh, some of the bosses are kind of lame, but others, or most of them have actually been really, really good uh, for, uh, for, for, for a twin stick game. Actually, it's very reminiscent of like a bullet hell, but without the bullets, it's more that they project, okay, this is gonna be a super broad area that they're going, that uh, the next attack is going to impact, and then it's gonna switch to another area, and you basically have to keep on moving. You're basically doing the Hagen Dance constantly. Like, there's a lot of really cool mechanics that they've worked into some of these bosses. Uh, and this is only, again, like, oh, there's probably like four or five that we've encountered. And I would say about three of them have been pretty solid and pretty fun to actually uh, encounter. There are a number of different tile sets. Uh, there are a number of different enemy types. By number, I mean like three. Uh, you go to Codex here, you can see all the different enemy types here. There's Wasteland ones. This is like straight out of Doom kind of characters, right? Uh, and over the Palace of Pain, these are your uh, kind of like cyborg, uh, uh, you know, man or uh, flesh meets metal type characters. Uh, very, some of them are kind of demon-esque, right? So you got things like this, right? Uh, I don't even know what you would really classify these as, really. Then you have the, uh, the bugs, basically. These are your, they're, they're land dwellers. You're gonna find these on planet surfaces and whatnot. Uh, and there's just a wide variety of these. And there's lots of little codex here to kind of explain them. Then you have some others. Now, these are actually random, uh, random encounters that will, uh, show the, uh, or that will basically randomly show up and you have to fight them. And I've had my ass handed to me by these guys at, at times because they will actually lock you into a, a ring, essentially, and you can't leave until you take them down. And, uh, well, sometimes I don't. <laughs> so the, ga the game overall, I feel, is quite fun. But I hope that I've given you enough information to know if this is something for you. For me, this is great. I do play a lot of games on the couch using my Steam controller, which gives me access to like keyboard mouse games and everything if I need to. Um, but also, I could play regular old keyboard uh, or controller based games if I wanted to, like this. And so this fits what I'm playing now or how I'm playing games now. I still play on the PC, but you know, a game like this, it's a twin stick. So I'm gonna play it with my twin sticks. That's how it's gonna work. So that's it. My name is Mike B. This is an indie for breakfast. Are we still calling it for breakfast? I don't know. This is a video about a game that I wanted to make. And I'm glad that I finally got around to making it because every time I've tried to make a, a video like this for other games, things have gone wrong or it didn't quite feel right. And I don't know why and I can't really explain it, but I appreciate that you guys have been patient with me <laughs> because I really want to get back into it. I want to do these more and more the way I did before. And uh, I promise you, I'm going to try. This one came out pretty good, I think. Rel relatively thorough. And I just need to keep writing this and keep writing this and keep on developing on this. And, you know, just continue doing things. So anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys, you guys' patience with me uh, on this channel. Uh, I can't even, I can't even begin to thank you really, actually. Uh, so yes, you're gonna see more content here. I have the help of AKA Corpse. He has been, uh, he's editing a couple videos a month for me, which is really, really nice. Uh, and on the back, on the flip side, I want to go ahead and continue doing things like this, uh, amongst other things as well. So this felt pretty good. This felt pretty good, I think. <laughs> uh, if I left anything out, if you feel like I didn't cover anything, please let me know. I'm, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm rusty, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally open to you guys' feedback. And I guess that's it. So thank you again for watching. The game is called Kill Squad. It's currently available on Steam for $24.99. If you get it before July 22nd, you can get it for $19.99. Thank you for your continued support. My name is Mike VAK Phony. This is a very loud sound.